Right, so let me introduce myself to you. This is my first time to introduce myself. Right, I'm a cell biologist uh, who has uh, fall in love very much with plant since very, very young. I used to go around my neighborhood to look for various kinds of plants for medicinal purposes. And the job is given by my grandmother and my parents. So that's why, that's why I fall in love with plants. So as I grew up, my interest in plants is always stick to my mind. So I pursue my uh, degree in biotech and looking at plants uh, again. Never give up my hope and my, my dream, you see. So I continue with my postdoc again, uh, so never let go myself uh, away from plants. So I study plant chemistry and so on and so forth. And the focus area is on cancer cell. That's why I have cell biologist here. So for the past 17 years, I work very hard on this area, meaning that looking at the active component of plants and see whether they have this conditional property or not, focus and on cancer. And with the work with, with the hard work that I have done for the past 17 years, um, not too bad my hours, and we have few active compounds which show very active against cancer. And we work very deep into it to look at the mechanism of actions using the latest uh, platform present like genomic, atomics, metabolomic, and so on and so forth, to elucidate the pathway that regulated by all these uh, active compounds. And now, in, now I mean with that, um, my dream is keep on uh, increase and wider. So I'm not only focused on the local herbs, I also work on traditional Chinese medicines. I think this is because they influenced by my uh, maternal grandfather, who was the uh, Chinese physician, and hunt down a lot of uh, these so called secrets. And I studied uh, the herbs that he, he used to treat cancer patients. And it works, and it really shows the anti cancer uh, effect. And therefore, today I would like to share with all of you a little bit of knowledge on cancer as well as the research that I have gone through so far. Our focus is on the cancer awareness, and my topic will be on cancer prevention. I think this is one of the topics that we would like to know, so that we know what to do to combat cancer. And the knowledge on cancer is very much important for us to uh, set the right strategy to combating cancer as well, right? So with the um, uh, information that we're going to get today on cancer awareness and past cancer prevention, we hope that We hope that to reduce the incidence of cancer as much as possible. And we do want to see the figures 1 in 10, 1 in 4 um, in future. We want to see if possible, we want to reduce all these incidents or death until the, the, the figure of zero, if we could. Yeah? That's our hope because we don't want to see a lot of people suffering. Alright. So currently, everybody, everybody is aware that you know, uh, weather is a problem to us, too hot, too cold, landslides, things like that. We, we all wonder with all these problems. There's a lot of people thinking of how to over overcome it, correct or not, yeah? Um, not forgetting, the world yeah, on cancer is still carried on, yeah? The problem that we had just now I mentioned, uh, that is a global warming uh, problem. We also do have global problem on combating cancer. They find the, the, the war on cancer is keep on going and going. And this, the, the concept of uh, the war on cancer is actually by President of uh, Dixon, the US uh, President. He mentioned that we would like, to, at that point, he mentioned that we need to fight cancer and bring the incident down to zero, which is about 40 years ago. And the effort is still carried on and carried on. With all of us here sitting here, uh, we are actually trying to fight cancer. Because I'm pretty sure that one of the members of our family may or had cancer before. My family, we have several of them that she had cancer. And my father was a cancer survivor. I walked on with him many years ago. Alright. So as I mentioned just now, we will find cancer again and again. I don't know 
when, but here on the report of this magazine, Fortune in 2009, they mentioned that we're going to find cancer yeah, as a disease for the next 50 to 100 years. That was the uh, point that they made in 2009. Will these people be reduced or increased? We are not sure. Yeah? Because cancer is really a tough a disease that we can actually overcome it. Right. Why? Why I mentioned that? Yeah? It is because of the history of the research and also the report that we've uh, gotten so far tell us that the journey towards achieving the goal to overcome cancer it is very hard and difficult. It is because in between we have this uh, detour and also uh, roadblocks. What are the things that are happening? What are the detour, uh, detours and also roadblocks that we have to face? Yeah? So here I would like to highlight three points which um, are causing us to have to detour all the time and find a new way to combating cancer. So these are three things that we like to highlight today. Uh, one of the point is cancer formations or carcinogenesis take a very, very long time. A normal cell, once being transformed, may take up to 20, 30 years, 40 years to form cancer. So the journey is too long. Yeah? So that is the difficulty for us to combat cancer, yeah? to totally kill the disease. The second point here is more multiple genetic mutations. So as we learned from Dr. Manisha's previous uh, talk, there are so many factors that can cause cancer. But even today, it goes to the genetic level. All these factors will cause genetic mutation and transform normal cell into abnormal cell and eventually become cancer cell. So that is multiple mutations. And that is the strategy that we have to put in so that we can actually target the right point at the right time. The third one I would like to highlight here, not only we're having multiple mutations, genetic mutations, we also do have multiple signaling <coughs> pathways that involve in cancer formation. Meaning that in, in order for cell to become cancer, they, only, they are not only follow one pathway, one way, but there are many, many ways that they can go through and becoming cancer cell. If you want to kill cancer cell with pathway A, they can shift their mind, adapt themselves and change to pathway B carry on with their life and multiply it like nobody's business. So that is why I always mention cancer is a smart, is a, is a smart self, smarter than us. So we have to work very hard to overcome them, get intelligence, so that we can kill them. So that is the multi, uh, multiple signaling pathway. And what I would like to add on here is with current research, uh, we realize that System biology will be the next big issue for us to tackle all diseases because they involve many systems in the body, uh, our body, yeah, which is our organ, things like that. So, system biology is the next uh, huge topic for discussion and also for cancer research. So, these are three main points as why we cannot combat cancer yet easily. So, again, what is cancer? We also learn from Dr. Michelle what is cancer, yeah. So simple as that, cancer is a global burden. Don't you know? think so? It's a global burden to us. It's a burden to me, it's a burden to you. It's a burden to everybody. Once a family uh, uh, having cancer, the whole family will be under stress. I still remember and still recall my family members, all of them under stress when my father diagnosed to have cancer. And the time is very difficult to go through. Yeah? So that is the burden. And statistic, yeah, back in 2008, we have 12 million, about 12 million new cases. But then in coming year, 2030, we're going to have 1 million new cases. Why is, why is this thing happening? Despite the new discovery, the new treatments that all scientists and clinicians will break up on it to treat cancer, why is the figure still increasing? Have you ever asked yourself why? Yeah. But must we have a reason behind? Yeah? And in uh, 2030, we're going to have 30 million cancer deaths uh, for all these cancer patients. So the number is so increasing. In Malaysia, this is a bigger than uh, about uh, the, uh, registry, the yeah? Malaysian registry. Uh, one in four will have cancer, and we have 21,000 uh, out of 5 million of uh, billion that we have. Uh, populations, uh, 
this number of uh, patients will have cancer. Yeah? Right? These are the uh, main uh, cancer that commonly found among cancer patients. Yeah? And why is that show that we have lung, breast, colorectal, stomach, and liver? And why other cancers are lower incident? So somebody, someone must tell us why only this type of cancer are famous, are common. It must be, have some reason behind. Yeah? Alright. So a recap, a recap of what we have learned from Dr. Manisha again, the factor, yeah, uh, cancer uh, causing factor here. Yeah. So these are the uh, factors that actually contribute to genetic mutation and eventually transform normal cell into cancer cell. And it will take here, as I mentioned, it's not into up to 30 years, 40 years, it is actually depending. Yeah? Right. So now I'd like to present all of you with a very short uh, 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 video presentation of the transformation of normal cell into the cancer cell. that went through transformations due to genetic mutation. One single normal cell transfers into the abnormal cell and they grow bigger lung, yeah? larger lung. And this process will carry on up to this much. And from, the, from this population of abnormal cell, one of it will turn into cancerous cell. And from that cancerous cell, you will start multiplying very, very fast here until you will invade the surrounding area and they will try to penetrate through the skin so that they can migrate to other parts of the body and begin their territory again, yeah, their secondary cancer. So from here until here will take years. Again, I'm going to give you a, sh a short video presentation on the cancer cell proliferation as compared to normal cell, which one is faster.
So, do you understand how far it is? On the fifth day, the normal cell only has 28 cells. But for cancer cells, it reached 1,500 cells. It's very, very fast. So, we've got to think of a way how to stop them from dividing. We don't want to feed them too much, yeah? Right. So, here another picture to show us that cancer cells are so smart. They have many legs and they have many hands. So, that they can move around. So, meaning that, scientifically, cancer cells can express many types of enzymes to di di uh, digest surrounding tissue so that they can open their own path and they can migrate to other parts of the body. So I would like to show here, this is a cell that express a lot of enzymes to digest the sur sur uh, surrounding tissue and they penetrate and they move around. Cancer cells can move. Once they find the way they can move on, for example like bloodstream, yeah, blood vessel here, the cancer cell from this tumor will migrate and then move along with the bloodstream to other parts of the body, wherever you like to go. Yeah? And uh, uh, once the tumor cell form the lung or the mass here, they are not only smart eating and stealing all our diet, they are also very smart eating new blood vessel. So then they can move around and also can um, uh, what do you say, uh, absorb more nutrients for them to grow faster and faster. Yeah? That's called angiogenesis, process of angiogenesis. Again, another video presentation to tell us how fast the cancer cell can move around. We, uh, Spread of tumors to other locations is of great importance in cancer. About 90% of the deaths due to cancer involve tumors that have spread around the body. The movement of tumor cells to other parts of the body is known as metastasis. Metastasis is a complex process during which cancer cells break off of the original or primary tumor and move through the body. Spread of tumors to distant locations is of great importance in cancer. About 90% of the deaths due to cancer involve tumors that have spread around the body. The movement of tumor cells to other parts of the body is known as metastasis. Metastasis is a complex process during which cancer cells break off of the original or primary tumor and move through the body to form tumors at new locations. From the point of view of a cancer cell, this is a dangerous and often unsuccessful process. A trip through the body is full of hazards that cause the death of most cells that begin the journey, even tough cancer cells. To begin the process, individual cells must break away from the tumor and invade nearby vessels. The cells crawl along the surface of other cells and the fibrous, stringy structure surrounding them and then force their way in. Shown here is the invasion of the blood supply. Once inside a blood vessel, the cancer cells may perish from a variety of causes. Some cells die simply because they are unable to survive floating around in the bloodstream. Others may become damaged and die when they squeeze through tight spaces or bump into the walls of the blood vessels. Still other migrating cells may be recognized and destroyed by cells of the immune system. How and where the migrating cells stop is different for different cancer types. Once the tumor cells are no longer moving, they can begin the process of forming a new tumor by leaving the blood vessel and beginning to reproduce in the new location. This does not always occur and cells that have made it this far may still die or fail to divide. If the new environment is suitable, the newly arrived cell will begin to grow and a new tumor will develop. Alright, so that is a little bit on the introductions of cancer and why it's cancer. Now I'd like to focus more on research on cancer. Yeah? So let us uh, understand that uh, scientists begin to understand what is cancer back then in 2013, uh, 1713. They discovered the breast cancer in uh, uh, 
300 years ago. That is the first time they record this. And follow in uh, 1890, they regard cancer as a genetic disease, which I mentioned just now, all this caused by genetic mutation. And in 1971, they started to understand that tumor suppressor genes that actually involve in regulating all these tumor formations. If you have strong tumor suppression genes, then the genes can help us to actually inhibit cancer formation. Yeah? So that is one of the famous ones which called P53, which has seen just now in the video presentation, P53. And research moved on, and uh, in 1976, uh, scientists to, uh, start to realize that they, we can actually use chemicals to stop cancer formation as well. Chemicals can come from natural plant resources or any natural resources, chemical synthesis and things like that yeah, to stop cancer or to kill cancer. And this will build what we call as cancer chemo prevention. And again, uh, due to, uh, because we have the latest technology in cancer research and molecular biology, so scientists to report, yeah, scientists to report that uh, we should uh, uh, kill cancer through targeted cancer therapy, meaning that we understand which pathway or which genes that actually cause the cancer and then we target that and kill cancer. That's called targeted cancer therapy. And uh, in 2003, uh, human genome on this uh, and also the cancer genome uh, project uh, been uh, released and we understand that many, many cancer actually uh, happen due to genetic uh, so, so far, there are many genetic related yeah, uh, causing uh, cancer. Yeah? That is the one that uh, so far scientists report yeah, from the beginning until 2010. These are the milestones for cancer research. And the move still carry on. Hopefully, that we can find the right cover, the right strategy to um, kill cancer. Right. So, here today, I would like to focus on cancer prevention, which is my field study. Is one of the focus in cancer research. Uh, why is that so? Because I mentioned just now, from a normal cell to become malignant cell, they have to go through uh, many years, and also this is a process they have to initiate to become abnormal cell, and eventually go through process of promotion to become malignant cell. So the target for cancer prevention is actually uh, aimed at this area here. Uh, we're going to have the cancer prevention because at this point here, the cancer cell can be reverted back to normal cell. And at this point, we also can kill the cancer cell. So this is the beauty of the, uh, the, the time of the duration of cancer um, uh, formation. Yeah? During this point here, during the promotion or initiated stage, we can actually divert the cell go back to normal cell. That's why we want to focus here. Once they pass this point, they will go into the malignant cell. So that particular point, we can okay, only think of certain strategy to treat cancer cell. Yeah, that's the focus. So that's why I'm, I'm highlighting here. For early detection screening, should be performed at early stage to detect abnormal cell. Then subsequently, we will work on prevention so that we can prevent carcinogenesis to be happened. And last one, more on the treatment which is the later stage, yeah? uh, we focus on treatment. Right, so cancer prevention research, yeah? uh, what is that? Here is, uh, in 2008, yeah, the very famous Planta Medical Journal reported that uh, the promising of global approach of uh, using uh, cancer chemo prevention to combat cancer. And why is that? Yeah? So as I mentioned uh, previously in my slide, so in um, 1960, uh, by Dr. Lee Wetterberg, he is the father of cancer chemo prevention research. He's the one that start to uh, uh, to promote using uh, natural product and chemical to fight cancer. Yeah. So the work is to carry on. Is still uh, we, since then we discover and find many many active components which can kill cancer. And again, cancer chemo prevention is a cancer preventive strategy to inhibit, to stop, to delay. Yeah? Don't let cancer cell go so fast and reverse the carcinogenesis process. So these are the phytochemicals that uh, has been found by scientists to show their effectiveness against cancer. And look at all these plants. I'm sure that all of us know all these, right? You know what is great? You know what's honey, garlic, so all these fruits and vegetables contain 
final chemical that has any chemical effect. If every day we consume all this, I'm sure that we are actually very, very healthy. Yeah? And all these chemicals that are extracted from all these fruits, vegetables, or herbs, they actually started at all these uh, cancer pathways. As I mentioned just now, many cancer signaling pathways, right? So these are pathways they are actually targeting at to kill the cancer. Here I would like to show you, this is part of my uh, herbal plants that have been screened for anti-cancer and all these they have anti-cancer property, they have anti-component inside. So this is only the few out of 100, more than 100 herbal plants that have been screened in international uh, Malaysia, Malaysia uh, the past 6 years. I collected more than 100 plants that have anti-cancer property and this is a famous one yeah, uh, that have this effect. I'm sure all of you know all this plant, right? You've seen this, correct? Now, your neighborhood or you yourself also have it. Uh, I would like to highlight this plant. Kerbo, bunga kerbo. We thought it's a uh, normal plant, but it has uh, anti-cancer component and we managed to isolate the pure compound and it is very active and we have really good on the mechanism. And this is uh, another one. Tuber. It's a very rare tuber and consumed a lot by uh, our Malay friends, not many among Chinese. Uh, it's called green baby. Yeah. So you also have the uh, uh, component. Yeah? So this is a methylene acid isolated by myself here from this tuber and we work on the projects for many many years. And besides this tuber, this uh, methylene acid also can be extracted from this very sources uh, from the uh, European country. And uh, the work that we have done, we have published on international journals on the uh, regulating factor on the pathway by this compound uh, in the four papers here. And uh, uh, subsequently, we proceed to look at more and wider effect of this compound. And we're using genomic platform to reveal uh, uh, what are the types or what are the pathways that can be regulated by Maslini acid using genomic platform or technology. Look at the various global genes expression and we found that this particular compound can regulate all these pathways in Raji cell, lymph, uh, lymphoma cell. So we are very excited with this uh, uh, work here. So my work doesn't stop at uh, local herbal plant. I also move on by using traditional Chinese medicine, which I'm using my grandfather's uh, prescriptions. Uh, to work on cancer, anti-cancer property using the latest technology of uh, genomic analysis. 